neighbor's boy does not fight alone. You are with him, part of his combat team through every weapon you make. If he cheats death in the line of duty, it is because you have paid off in the line of production. You and your machines produce the man hours of his life. Every item on your work list helps keep his name off some casualty list. You are there in the storm and thunder of battle. You are there when the lightning strikes. Lightning, P-38 lightning, American workers lightning, lightning from the workbenches and assembly lines. Washington lists it officially as P-38, and that's what the shipping list reads. But an aircraft spotter once reported it as two airplanes overhead with their arms wrapped around each other. The Germans cursed it as Gabel Schwanzteufel, fork-tailed devil. But the Air Force men whose lives it saves nicknamed the P-38 Angel in Overalls because it's the all-around workhorse when the going gets tough. Once the lightning was called the most hoodooed plane in aviation history, cursed as revolutionary. First fighter to use a turbo supercharger. First fighter with a tricycle landing gear. First fighter grouping guns and cannon to fire directly ahead of the pilot. Rumored too much plane for any one man to fly and fight it. But men learned to fly and fight in the P-38s. Learned an odd way, by piggyback. Two men crowded in a cockpit built for one. And so the first German plane shot down in this war by the U.S. Air Forces was a big fuck -a wolf bagged over Iceland by a P-38. 
and when fighter planes were needed in Africa. The P-38s were the first to fly non-stop across the Atlantic. And they roared into action in time to knock out Rommel's tanks. When our heavy bombers started commuting to Berlin, it was the P-38s who led the way. And some arrived at the target area ahead of the bombers. So P-38s can claim to be the first American planes over Berlin. When our invasion convoy sailed for France, P-38s were the first fighters ordered to provide air support. And the Angels made good their promise to the ground troops. If you see a plane above you, it'll be one of ours. When long-range fighters were needed to patrol the skies between the South Pacific Islands, P-38s drew the assignment swept the heavens clear from Australia to the Philippines. It's the hoodoo plane for our enemies. Ask the man who flies one. Ask a Wisconsin boy named Major Dick Baum. You've heard of him. I just get my P-38 on their tails and blow them out of the sky. Ask a test pilot. The only limit to what you can do with the lightning is the endurance of the pilot himself. Ask a fighter pilot. If one of those twin motors gets hit or conks out, you've still got enough turbo supercharged power in the other to pull away from any trailing jab and get to home base. When you look down at miles of ocean or the endless nightmare of a hot green jungle, you sure get to love the sound of those two motors. Either one can keep you among the living. And with that tricycle landing gear, you can set down in the mud of a beachhead strip like a butterfly at 80 miles an hour. There's plenty of reason to call my P-38 an angel. That's what the fighting team thinks of assembly line lightning. Ask Far Eastern Air Force head, Lieutenant General George C. Kenney. The morale in a P-38 outfit is so high it almost scares you. These lightning pilots will take on any job because their plane will. It'll tote a bomb load of two 1,000-pounders, pack extra fuel tanks, rate of climb, 4,000 feet a minute, rate of speed, secret, but better than 425 miles an hour, rate of dive, faster than the speed of sound. To the aircraft spotter, the Angel and overalls might have looked like two planes hugging each other, but it can do the work of half a dozen. Flying tow car. As a troop supporter, the P-38 is low-flying artillery.
Control Tower from Army 127. Control Tower, over. Army 127 from Control Tower. Go ahead. Clear the field for crash. Army 127 from Control. Try to make it on runway 2. Land east to west. Over. Wilco. Nose wheel's gone. Start sweating, friends. We're coming in. an American pilot die in the line of duty. Call his passing one of the occupational hazards of a soldier. No one is to blame but the enemy. The P-38 he flew was one of the best. Each part worked perfectly. The engines, the instruments, the guns. Yes, his death was the fault of the enemy. That fault will be corrected. Corrected by you. You who make the P-38. By you who make every one of the thousands of parts that keep it flying. You will be there when the lightning strikes. You too are angels in overalls.